Hello and welcome. My name is Peter and I am your host today and thank you so much for joining me. Today I have the honour of being joined with Bob Gray who is a very experienced Jedi and he's here to talk today about Holotech products, healing frequencies and his experiences and testimonials using Holotech products. Welcome Bob and thank you for coming and joining us today. Well, thanks Peter and thanks for inviting me. Pleasure. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Bob, to start off so that people have a little bit of a background understanding of who you are and where you come from, could you maybe start by introducing how it was that you found out about Source Directors, sort of the lead up? Okay, well, I, um, you've interviewed Chris before, and uh, as she stated in those interviews, um, it was Chris that actually woke me up and introduced me to Source Directive, Smarty, uh, and the Jedis. Um, so I did 26 years in the Royal Australian Air Force, and then a further 20 years um, working for Defence as a public servant. So 46 years in total with Defence. Um, so as you can imagine, I was fairly well and truly indoctrinated. Uh, I joined the Air Force when I was 17 and, um, and then retired a, a few years ago. Uh, so I had a, a very solid indoctrination and, um, uh, I guess, uh, just learning or being taught or told uh, what to do, when to do it, and pretty much not questioning it in the main. So uh, waking up to what was actually going on uh, took quite a bit of effort, um, took a few years of, of um nibbling away at the at the white elephant, I guess. Yeah. And um, and then eventually Chris, uh, I, I wouldn't say convinced me, but she opened my eyes, put it that way. She opened my eyes. Um, and the, the biggest thing that I had to come to terms with is that the, the governments and elected officials were, who were there supposedly to, to look after us and do the right thing for the people were doing the exact opposite. You know, as I grew up um, and then matured and went into the, the services, um, you know, you, you were always taught, always told that you know, the people in the white coats and the people in authority uh, are, are to be respected and believed. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. And, and that's all what's coming out now. So it was quite an awakening for me. Um, yeah. But uh, well and truly awake now. And uh, run around with a tin foil hat on, if you please. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that would have been so difficult for you to have that veil finally lifted completely to see through, you know, even the things you'd participated in in the past, uh, in the past with your military background, and how maybe that wasn't for the greater good in the end. You know, that would have been that would have been tough. For me, myself, I've only recently really, really woken up. And it is, it's hard. It's hard to see the medical system, agriculture, the government, you know, the Defence Force, everything is just all a part of this big corrupt system that needs to go. So first of all, well done. And thank you for sharing and, you know, coming to the, the light side, yeah. but, you know, yeah. and, and doing all the amazing work that you're doing. So, Bob, how did you find out about Source Directives and King John Smarty? What was your personal experience and, and how, well, how validated was it? Sorry. I found, found out about Smarty um, through Chris. Uh, Chris found out through uh, Melissa and uh, one of, another Jedi. Um, and once Chris had sort of become aware of what Smarty was doing, how he was doing it, um, and who he was, uh, she then said, look, you know, you need to get on and have a look at this. So I'd long since cancelled my uh, Facebook account. So I reinstated the Facebook account and got on and had a look. And it, it just all resonated. Um, wow. You know, I'm a, a, a sceptical person by nature uh, with a, an engineering background. So, you know, I, I need to see and feel and have the proof. I didn't need it with Smarty. Um, there, were, there was enough faith and feeling there that it was just a natural process. Um, and it's just grown from there. So you know, using his products, using his tools, uh, using the Smarty method, 
Uh, it all just helps to improve your belief and your knowing of what is and what can be. And that, yeah. that, that we have the power, we are the power. Um, yeah, that's, that's the best thing. Can, that, yeah. Sorry, go on, go on. Yeah. And um, now what, what we can manifest is unlimited. So it's just, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Um, especially just that you had that knowing. A lot of Jedi do have that sort of just sense of knowing. And like what you said, with your background being a seeing is believing kind of guy, very practical, um, you know, someone that would use logic and, you know, actual like hard evidence and research, you know, that's that's incredible that you just had that that inner knowing and that faith that he was who he, who he says he is. And can, can I ask, did you have to at all? You probably didn't because what you just said is that you didn't really need any sort of um, convincing, but did you do the Smarty method and, and the testing that, that he does um, to sort of validate what he's saying, just to reconfirm to yourself? Um, well, yes, yes, I did, but it wasn't uh, to prove or disprove what Smarty was saying. Um, yeah, I, I used the, the Smarty method with the, the charms um more to confirm or uh what was actually happening you know in, in any of the zooms and and jedi sessions that smarty was holding um he'd always make a statement and then say test it you know, use your pendulum and test it so and we all would and we'd, we'd all get a, an affirmative or a, a negative depending on what the question was um you know chris chris and i found out very early on in our Jedi uh, experience, Jedi training, um, that the questions you ask of your pendant are very literal. Uh, if you ask the wrong question, then you're definitely going to get the wrong answer. Um, so we had to be careful how we phrased the question. If the if the answer that we were getting seemed odd or wrong, uh, then we'd rephrase the question and and see what it, what the answer was there. Uh, sometimes you get exactly the same answer. And so you say, well, okay, that's the way it is. Other times you don't. Um, we, the, the One of the biggest things was that we went for a, a walk one night and we felt bad. And so Chris asked her pendant if um, there was darkness around her or around us, it was, um, and she got a yes. And I asked the same, well, I asked a question a different way and I got no. Um, but her question was, is there darkness around us? Well, it was night time. Of course there is. Of course there is. <laughs> so, you know, whereas I asked if there were dark entities around us and I got a no. So, you know, we, that, that taught us a, a very good lesson in that we have to be careful what we actually ask. And uh, we've just, you know, grown from that and moved on from there. Yeah, that's a that's a really valuable lesson to share. I too have experienced that. Well, as you know, um, as a newer Jedi, um, receiving you know no's or yeses to answers because I haven't phrased it correctly. But also, would you recommend to new Jedi's trying out the the Smarty method or the Jedi method using a pendulum or one of Smarty's charms? Would you recommend that they also, if they're getting an incorrect answer again and again, and they've rephrased it, they maybe do some clearing work on themselves or or their charm? And and how would they uh, do that? Yeah, the, uh, the charms don't need to be cleared. Uh, if it's a smarty charm or a smarty tool, you don't need to clear it, right? They come ready to go, connected to source. Uh, if you're using your own pendant, your know, necklace or something else, then yes, there is a command that you need to use to, to clear the pendant. Um, and that's available in um, in Bubble Up and on YouTube, and people can go in and, and watch what actually Smarty says in his um, uh, teaching of the Smarty method. Um, so if you are getting wrong answers consistently uh, or strange answers consistently, then yeah, by all means, do a, a clearing. Clear yourself. Uh, you should be clearing yourself regularly um, because we can all be affected by other entities and, and things happening around us. Um, so it always pays to, to clear yourself and make sure that you are protected in yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's great advice, um, especially for anyone new sort of watching right now. And if anyone's wondering, I will be linking down below the Bubble Up 
link, as well as all the Jedi training sessions, the Telegram groups, and also Bob has some special work that he's been doing. Bob creates a incredible healing frequency cocktails using the free holograms off of Smarty's <laughs> Holotech website. So I'll be linking that down below as well on his YouTube channel. And Bob, would you like to sort of start talking about maybe how you came up with the idea of these incredible cocktails with frequencies that you've created on YouTube? Well, they, they weren't my idea. Uh, there was a, a previous Jedi who was creating them. Um, and I, I was managing them effectively, uh, or essentially, um, you know, putting them into, into uh, Bubble Up and putting them onto YouTube so that they get the exposure. Uh, that member left Source Directives, uh, went on a different path. Um, so I picked up the, the reins and, and ran with it from there and uh, created more cocktails from that point on and then publish them on, on YouTube and in, in Bubble Up, collect them in Bubble Up. Um, as you mentioned, with Bubble Up, uh, Bubble Up is where we store all of the free hollows um, and a whole bunch of other information, including the cocktails, there's new member resources in there, uh, Smarties interviews. Um, Smarty often recommends a particular movie to watch because of its training uh, capacity or capability. Um, and so they're all housed or stored in Bubble Up as well. And people can go in and download those particular elements and, and have a look at them at their leisure. Um, you know, as Smarty's told us that uh, if effectively every uh, sci-fi movie or horror movie or you know, weird movie that you've ever seen is the, the Deep State or the Cabal telling us what they're actually doing so it's it's 90 percent truth 10 percent hollywood and um so that it's quite uh, quite enlightening and to to actually go back and watch some of the older movies and that were, have been released for years mm -hmm. and see exactly what's happening in there and the, the messages that have been sent with new eyes and it's quite mm -hmm. eye-opening in fact um, yeah quite I'll, comical I'll... Quite comical at times too. I mean, like Star Trek and Star Wars, and I mean, they're just a couple we could we could name. But there's definitely a lot of sort of truth in there. Like it's it's actually yeah. you know that's and which kind of for this whole truth movement where this stuff, this information and knowledge is coming out, it's kind of made it so new people might go, oh, well, that just came from a movie, haha. <laughs> like that's a joke because it's been sort of pushed as this false, you know, haha. <laughs> this is you know fiction. And that yep. was a part of their cutting plan all along, the bastards. So that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. So and use of portals, moving things with your mind. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Yuri Geller moved bending spoons with his mind, that sort of thing. Uh, um, who have thought? Yeah, who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, Bob, if you've had, I'm sure you have, if you could think of any testimonials that you've had just from your incredible cocktails that you've created and then we'll move on to some tools that you use um yeah, mm. <laughs> it's, yeah hard to think of them on the spot um it's all right there's... no sorry there's, there's, i know there have been a few cocktails that people have used um that have had you know, amazing results for them um you know the the uh, the sleep cocktail uh, floating across, it's called. Um, people have used that very successfully. Uh, we use that ourselves um, every night and charge our water with it before we go to bed. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the the demons be gone cocktail that's helped I a use, lot of people. Yeah, I've I've used that one, Bob, and it's amazing. I actually set my iPad next to the bar to charge the water as I lay in it. And because if I feel like I've been attacked or, you know, my energy is off, I will sort of allow that the cocktails to charge my water when I lay in it. And yep. I feel so much better afterwards. It, it's truly incredible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, we we have a, 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 a corner spa bath in our ensuite as well as our shower. And we have a, a, a Smarty Charm hanging in the shower the entire time, uh, never leaves there. Um, and also, if we're having a, a bath, then we'll hang one of our charms in the bath so it's actually hanging in the water uh, for the same reason. Um, 
And that's awesome. So and it's you, you charging sort of... the water in the bath while we're in the bath with it. And uh, yeah. It's like a it's a blessed bath or a blessed shower. I've actually yeah, been doing that's it. right. Yeah. I've and been doing because the same. Water has, <laughs> and because water has memory, uh, when you actually release the bath, then all of those frequencies get set out and, and then flush down through the uh, the waterway system. So, you know, it's not just helping us, it's helping everyone. And, uh, yeah, that, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Wow. That's really cool. I hadn't thought of it that way. I understand that, you know, there's the um, uh, the, the hologram, the holo hologram that actually expands the, the frequencies outward. It's like the 50... Yep. Yeah, 50 the broadcast broadcast hologram, 50, 50 feet or 15 metres, yeah. Wow, wow, that's that's really cool. So every time someone say you know um, uses their Smarty Charm for something or one of the tools like the wands or anything like that, or you know even plays one of your cocktails, that's getting broadcasted out because that particular hollow is in there, expanding the energy outward. Hey, is that right? Um, not not specifically. Right? If you've got the the fifty or the broadcast hollow with another hollow. That will expand the the broadcasting or the the range of that hollow. Um, the the charms uh, have a, a slightly bigger um, range okay. than the, the holograms, um, but it, it's roughly two feet normally. And then you add the the broadcast hollow to expand on that up to fifty feet. So okay, well that's good to know. Okay, Bob. So. I have a question for you. What is your favorite tool, Holotech tool, that you use the most regularly um, and is just the most, you can't leave the house without it type thing, apart from your charm? <laughs> oh, the stealth, the stealth. Yeah, the S stealth, S yeah. One? Yeah. yeah. Well, this, this is the S2. S2, um, Yeah, so I, I take that everywhere because it, it fits nicely. Um, I also have the R1, the rainbow wand, the metal wand. Um, and that that is actually kept in my backpack in my uh, umbrella case. So wherever my backpack goes, that goes with me as well. But I I generally will have the S2 with me, my charm, my uh, bracelet, and the um, the R1. So the R1 is handy because uh, it, it's unbreakable. Uh, it, you drop one of the crystal wands and you'll have several wands. And, uh, you know, it doesn't diminish their capacity or their, their power, um, but it's, a, it's you know, heartbreaking if you do break a wand. Yeah. And we know lots of Jedis who have broken theirs, unfortunately. So, um, but, and we're looking forward to the new uh, SMW wand, which will be metallic. It'll be a, a metal wand. And it, it's, in a uh, in the, the stealth size and also the original size, the five inch size. Wow. So they'll they'll be coming out uh, probably in the next few months once Smarties um, finish off with the crowdfunding aspect. So it'd be really good. That is so, so exciting. They they can go anywhere anytime because they're unbreakable. I love that. That's so cool. I can't wait for the new products he's got. He's got so many amazing things coming out. Yeah, can, absolutely. Like, you know, cutlery knives and forks yeah. you know with the frequency so whenever you eat something you're going to have that beautiful full nourishment the vitamins the energy everything that you're meant to be getting in your food you'll be yeah. getting so yeah, yeah, yeah as really long as they stuff. don't tingle when you put them in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> they might they might have that <laughs> you get a little zap yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little zap every time you eat something so. wow so bob you actually had a really interesting experience you and Chris um, that I saw posted on the testimonial page on Telegram um, recently where you were out for a night walk and you guys helped a, a lady. Would you like to yes. tell me a little bit about yeah. that? Yes. Um, we'd gone for our normal walk uh, and you know, this is 10 o'clock, 10.30, somewhere around there at night, so it was dark. Um, and we... On, on our first leg, we were we were tired, we were worn out, we'd had a big week, so we decided to turn around and come back at the halfway point, before the halfway point. And it was on the return journey, we were probably three, four hundred metres from home, and uh, we saw this lady with her uh, trolley, and 
pushing on or she was standing in, on the sidewalk as we crossed the road uh, to go to our place. And uh, we walked, we actually walked past her, um, saw her situation, and then uh, we got into the car park just around at the corner of us and we stopped and um, Chris went back and uh, asked her you know, if she was okay, if she needed anything, and I gave her a donation and then uh, she was very pleased and um, so then we went, came on home. Uh, when we got home, uh, Chris went and collected a few other things, some water and biscuits and you know, nibbles and whatever to, to give to her and went, we went back out again. Uh, I kept my distance, so I didn't uh, scare her or worry her and uh, just kept an eye on what was happening so that um, Chris was okay and the, the, uh, the lady was okay as well. And, uh, yeah, which was really good. And she was, uh, she was across the road at the uh, local supermarket um, using the money that we'd given her to actually stock up as well. So that was pleasing too. And, you know, she, she wasn't just buying smokes or, or, or booze. Uh, she actually was su getting her supplies so that she could um, you know, go ahead and, and live the next few days. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So now, now every night when we walk, we keep an eye out for it. <laughs> so That's so great. Have, <laughs> since. So, uh, yeah. but yeah. yeah. And wow. yeah, she, when Chris gave her the money and the, the food, uh, she just beamed. She was. Yeah, she was probably nervous as Chris approached her, um, wondering what the hell is this lady coming over to me for. But uh, she got she got the message. Yeah, and of course, in, while we were we were doing that, I, I was in the car park wandering her, and and also um, Chris was wandering her as well. I so was wondering. Took, yeah, took the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, took the opportunity to to um, give her what we needed to give her. Were you doing it discreetly? Obviously, you were doing it from the car. Was Chris able to actually ask her if she could wand her or heal no. her? No, no, no. Yeah. You've got to pick your moments, I, I suppose. Right. Yeah. 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 And I, I guess that even the food that you guys gave her, even if you weren't aware of doing it, I'm sure you guys were because you're, you know, senior Jedis, you probably charge with all the beautiful frequencies that she needs. Absolutely. Every, everything that comes into this house gets charged before it goes into the cupboard. Wow. Um, we've got a, a, a bench where we have uh, hollows printed out. We have our, our wands and tools there. And uh, so they sit the, the food and what have you sits there for a few minutes to, to absorb the charge and then it gets put away. That's amazing. Yeah, you, mm. you and Chris do some incredible work out in your walks. Um, do you have any other experiences or recent where you've been able to perform healing or um, at least maybe tell people about King John Smarty and his products? Anything you can think of right now? Well, yeah, we went to a party on uh, Sunday, uh, this Sunday, you know, a couple of days ago, and um, it was a, a down at a winery just, uh, just out of Geelong. Uh, which is probably an hour's drive from where we live. Um, and the, the ladies we were sitting opposite, uh, they'd come up from Warrnambool, um, which is probably five hours' drive. So they were, they'd come a long way. And we were talking to them. Uh, one of them we've, we've known for quite a while. Uh, we met her through the, the protests that we were attending. Uh, the other lady had just come up for the day, um, but... The, uh, she'd been brought up specifically to to meet us, um, as well as to to go to the party, and we were talking to her. Um, she's now keen on uh, joining the Jedi um, family, and uh, she's looking into Smarties products at as we speak. Um, sent her some links this morning and, and was um, chatting to her, so she's very keen and. Uh, the, there are three or four others that we were there with who have also become Jedis and we've been working with them as well. So, yeah, um, pretty much everywhere we go, at, at some stage, Marty will come up in the conversation and then we take it from there. Um, if if they're open to it, they're open to it. If they're not, well, okay, we've, we've put the seed out there. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of letting it, it uh, fertilize and grow 
I love that you guys do that. You're so confident and willing. I know you trust completely everything that Smarty's doing and you're obviously both very active social people, you know, so it's really incredible work how you're sort of bringing people over and teach them about Smarty and his products. Do you have any, can you think of any situations where someone has just been like, no, does that happen often? Um, I wouldn't say it happens often. Um, now, Chris is an excellent judge of character and she knows how far she can go. Um, I'm not so good at it <laughs> in that sense. Um, I'll, I can tend to put my foot in my mouth um, regularly and get told off for it. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's quite obvious those that are open and those that aren't. Um, you, know, you pretty well tell in the first couple of minutes whether or not they're receptive or not. And um, if they're not receptive, well, that's their choice. Um, yeah. you know, everyone's got free choice, as, as Smarty keeps telling us. Uh, they're good or bad, that's their choice, and we you know, we have to respect that. And so we, we do. Um, doesn't mean we won't try again, but, um, yeah, we just let them go and, and move on. There's plenty of people out there that, that need need smarty and are willing to to look at it yeah yeah that's great i i agree with you there no one needs anything shoved down their throat it's it's really just that power of suggestion and with your own energy being so high and you showing excitement usually that's enough for someone to go hmm, what are they on about you know i'm interested you know yeah. so i think that's yeah that's definitely the right approach to take yeah. on can you yeah, think yeah. of sorry go on sorry um, yeah, it, as you said, you've got to tread lightly. Um, you know, humans being humans, if you want to push it down their throat, then all they're going to do is throw up on you. Yeah, so, project you know, it now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you, you don't want to be the glass of Eno that's going to make them sick. So, um, you know, it, whereas if you, you just give them a little bit of information, uh, tread lightly, and uh, then uh, you'll know whether they're going to accept it or not. Uh, if they're if they're accepting, well, then you go further, um, the, and the further you get to go, the deeper you get to go, and until you're you know, just flat out telling them everything. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so and once once you see that light switch on, you know, you pretty much can't switch it off. You know, they just want more and more information. Yeah, it's addic it's addictive. You know, it is it is, it is that rabbit hole that you just can't stop going down. Once you go down it, it's like wow, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're all dying for the truth, aren't we? We're all yearning <laughs> we for it. <laughs> yes. Yearning. Yeah, yeah no, bring it on. Yeah. yeah, bring it on, bring it on. It's it's a time of truth. It's the golden age, you know, all the all the nasty stuff is getting drained out and the light's shining in all the dark places. So it's a beautiful time to be alive. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Bob, um, I'm trying to think of I wonder if I can take you for a walk down memory lane. And if you would be able to maybe recall one of the first healings you ever did. Ooh. Um, I, probably one of the first healings I ever did would have been with Chris or on Chris. Mm. Um, oh, I can't even remember what it would have been. <laughs> she had so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no. It, yeah, it would have been with Chris probably uh, on her either elbow or wrist or something along those lines. Um, you know, she's experiencing pain and and just used the wand and, the, and the, probably the pendulums at that stage um, to to ease the pain and and you know, send it up to Daddy and, and uh, take it away. Uh, wow. <laughs> and you and Chris, you have had experience healing um, really big issues with people, so diseases and, and cancers and all kinds of things. Can, is there one really big healing that you yourself or you and Chris or you, Chris and Iris, I believe you guys work as a team, that you guys have done that's in the near future, like in the, sorry, recent past that you can think of? Um, there was one a while ago. Uh, I'm not sure if Chris mentioned it. Uh, a girlfriend of ours, uh, she'd been diagnosed with cancer. Um, 
and uh, the prognosis for her wasn't very good. Um, and uh, uh, that was when pretty much about the time we met her, uh, she just received the, the diagnosis um, and we said, look, uh, we can help. And we did. Um, and we, we uh, gave her the tools to, to help her. Uh, we did healings for her. We put her up to the Jedi group on healings and requests um, and in the Zoom sessions and what have you. And uh, she's now cancer free. Now, wow. doctors don't know how or why, um, but she's cancer free. Um, and it was actually her birthday at the weekend. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. Happy birthday, Wendy, was it? Yes, yeah, pretty <laughs> incredible. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's just those sorts of things that just you, know, you can't get past that. It, it, um, it just builds your faith and builds your knowing so that you you continue to work, continue to move on and, and do things. Um, we have uh, no fear of challenging anything now. Uh, we'll, we will take on any aspect of, of healing that we, we need. Um, uh, Chris has a, an extremely strong link with Daddy, um, and and uh, he lets her do pretty much anything that we need to do. Wow, that's so cool! And I know that Smarty has said in the past in some of his Jedi sessions that the more healings you do, the more healing abilities and power source Daddy gives us, and yeah. the more you grow in your confidence. And then it's that believing and knowing and that trust and the faith that also expands on your ability so you guys must just be so powerful well i wouldn't say that but um yeah our abilities certainly have improved um and and our faith in our abilities has improved yeah um yeah particularly mine uh chris has always had faith in what she can and can't do or what she can do um there's not much she can't do and um so you know we really don't question what we are trying to do. Um, we're not trying to do it. We just do it. Uh, yeah. there, there is no trying anymore. We just do it. Um, and we know that it will be done. And uh, it, it, yeah, it might take a week, might take a year, but we know it will happen. And, and that's what we have the faith for. Yeah, in sources, in daddy's time. That's right. Yeah, we allow the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bob, when you were performing the healing on Wendy, I understand you had lots of different components and aspects of healing that you did to sort of just really bombard her with all those healing frequencies for the cancer. Mm -hmm. um, what different things did you use? Did you send her Cancer Buster Hollows? Did you, I know she joined the Jedi group. Um, did you put her through like the this is the crystalline healing um, print? Yeah. Like what? Yeah, yeah. What kind of things? Specifically. We, uh, we used everything within our power. Um, we used the wands. We used, um, you know, Chris has got the, the dash one wand set, um, where mine are all dash twos. Um, you know, wow. just as capable, right? The, the, all of the wands are just as capable as each other, um, but the dash ones can only be used by the person that was they were given to or gifted to. Um, not for sale, mine, are they yeah, no, for sale. no, they are not for sale, uh, never will be. The Dash 2s, anyone can buy and anyone can use for good. Uh, they can't be used for evil or, or bad. So you can't pick up a, a Dash 2 wand and, and wish someone harm. It, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and and Smarty's reiterated that time and time again. Um, the But, yeah, we, we used our, our wands. To, to heal her, we used put her through the crystalline generator. Um, in fact, we had her put through the crystalline generator because uh, we didn't have one at that stage. And uh, a friend of ours in the US actually ran her, her photo through the, the CG. Um, we've sent her or given her uh, a range of hollows. I couldn't tell you which hollows they were now because there's so many of them that we've given her. Uh, to help her with her, her diet and her, the healing and certainly the cancer buster hollow uh, was one of them. Um, we've, we've 
gifted her straws and um, the R1. Uh, we gave her one of the R1 Lovely. ones. Um, and, and she's actively using that now. She's paying um, it forward. So, she's doing healing yeah, now too. Yeah, that's yeah right. I love and, that. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's what it's all about. You know, we often see that um, people are, are, want to make money doing these sorts of things, doing this, but you know, we don't see that that's the, the purpose or that's what it's for. Um, everything we do, we do for free. There is no uh, payment for it. Now, we get, our payment is is knowing what we're doing is doing good for people. And, um, you know, we just get so much joy and, and enjoyment from that. There is nothing more rewarding and beautiful than helping someone, saving a life, um, you know, sacrificing something of your own to help, you know, or just time or energy. It's so simple as well. You know, I, I, I really believe that is, you know, that's that's daddy's work, that's source's work. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's so rewarding to anyone new to experience that for the first time when you've done your very first healing, um, you've had that confirmation and someone's called you up and said, hey, you know, my sinus infection is healed or um, I don't have cancer anymore. Whatever it is, however big or small, it is, it is it's beautiful and, and you yeah. can't stop. It's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just your first healing when you get a confirmation like that. It, every time we get confirmation of something that, or someone that we've healed or someone that, something we've done for someone, um, you still get that elated feeling. And uh, you know, it, it's just a rush of emotion that goes through you. Um, I've, I've noticed lately, you know, I'm, I'm very empath empathetic um, and uh, that's that's part of my gift, part of my work, and I we have uh, a lot of ambulances that go past our place and go near us, um, and we always hit the ambulance. Uh, we want it and and command the you know, whoever's travelling in it is apart from the you know, in, including the the ambos, uh, the paramedics, etc. Um, that they'll be healed and and looked after. Um, but lately, I've actually started uh, feeling what's happening in in the ambulance. Um, some ambulances will go past under lights and siren, and and I get nothing. Others will get go past, and I'll get hit with a wave of emotion. So you know, I know that something bad is happening with that ambulance, um, and it's quite a, a surreal experience. You are a true empath and you're energetically sensitive and those I would like to say qualities and abilities within you that are quite natural are growing the more work you do with source yeah. and the stronger yeah. your connection is mm. I actually resonate a lot with your um, ambulance story I've actually as a child like since I can remember every time I've heard an ambulance I used to pray I don't pray now I command and it's something I do as well and I I am very similar to you in that respect Bob in that I I often feel it and I'll get teary and like you know, you could feel, is it a heart attack? Is it a, is it a child? Is it a car accident? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It, it really is. You know, it, it, quite debilitating at times. Um, yeah. <laughs> Especially and, if you're but, driving and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, a, a week or so ago, I pulled up in a set of lights, uh, going into, to out into Werribee. Um, and uh, I was actually going in to pick up some, some food for tea. And there was, I could hear the sirens going. And so I started um, commanding. And then there was an ambulance came in on from my left, because it was a T intersection, mm -hmm. came in from the left. Uh, and then a second ambulance came in from the right. And then both turned into the street I was in and up past me. Um, the, the first ambulance that came in from the left, it was bad. It was really bad. Uh, I don't know what they were going to or where they were coming from. Uh, I suspect they were going to an, a, an accident. But uh, the emotion that went through me from that ambulance was far or far outweighed the second ambulance that came around the corner. Um, and, yeah, you know, I just couldn't do anything for a, a couple of minutes. Just sat at the lights. Luckily, they were red. I didn't have to go anywhere, yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was quite an experience. So it's a it is a beautiful gift, Bob. Because what happens is, you know, 
in having that, yeah, I'm just going to clear this up for a second. I've got a bit of feedback then. Um, what happens is when you sort of feel someone else's pain, whether it is the ambulance or whether it's your next door neighbor or whether it's someone you're walking past in the park you, and you, you understand that feeling, whether it feels like something sort of dark or whether it feels like something sad, you know, that's, that's your calling, you know, to go and do something about it. And that's something I'm growing to understand now, which I think it's yeah. just so cool how in tune you are and, and Chris as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as you said, it's how how aware you are and how tuned in you are. Um, you know, Daddy speaks to all of us. It's just whether or not we're willing to listen and and hear what he's saying. And um, if you tune in, then you'll hear it. Because yeah. he loves us all. <laughs> yeah. And so many of us feel disconnected. So it's um, but it's not true. It's not true. It's a lie. We yeah. are so connected. It's so loved. Yeah. And, you know, all of us can strengthen our connection with source, with daddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and once you've, once you've got your eyes open and can see what's been happening there, that's the conditioning we've been put through for, for centuries. Um, and, you know, we, we've literally been dumbed down and, and closed off to all of the things that are, are possible and available um, just to keep us subservient, literally. Disempower um, us, that's you know, right. The, the, the elites have wanted it all uh, and have set up everything to achieve that. Um, all of our schools, all of our training, all of our universities, um, you know, they're all designed to... You know, to teach us, yeah, absolutely. But they don't give us understanding and they don't give us knowing or knowledge um, in the main. You know, and, and and you're only encouraged to go a, a certain depth. And um, you know, it, it, it was all part of their game plan. Yeah. So I guess fortunately, the, yeah, yeah. fortunately, yeah, a lot of us have been woken up. There's still a lot that need to be woken, um, but it's happening. It's happening. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's happening faster and faster. And from what I understand is we're sort of entering the time of um, mass awakening. And I think the time for sort of waking up on your own terms and in your own time is ending. You know, yeah, it, yeah it's coming and it, it's just going to be, it's going to be beautiful because I don't, like, I wouldn't want anyone to fear there's going to be so much beautiful love and light frequencies coming into earth as we, you know, ascend up into the seventh dimension and um, such a beautiful, beautiful new reality is just waiting for us around the corner. So Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the more that we um, envision that reality, uh, the, the closer it's going to get. You know, we, we don't allow, Chris and I don't allow anything negative uh, into our lives now. Um, we, we just look to the future. Uh, if there's something coming in that's not part of that future, then we just reject it outright. Um, it, it annoys us on a lot of the, the social media feeds um, where you, you see all of the, uh, the fear-mongering and the, the you know, people that are, are scared. And, you know, I understand why they're scared. Um, I understand why... A lot of it's being put out there, but we just don't accept any of it and, and push it aside. Um, and we'll, we'll openly reject it in, in a lot of cases as well. You know, even in uh, the Source Directives group mm. on, on Telegram, you, know, you get a lot of the posts or you see a lot of the posts that are it's dredging up old footage, old news, old and, stuff. Yeah. That Stuff was that makes around, it really yucky as well. Yeah, like things that, that was that around just years ago mm -hmm. um, that was just designed to, to put the fear into you. And yeah, so... Um, and lower, lower your frequency because that, that's the yeah. most important thing is to keep your frequency high um, right. and to focus on the positive, focus on that new reality because, you know, where our attention and our intention goes, energy flows. Yes. So if we're not feeding into it, just like you and Chris do, then then that's the way forward for all of us. Yeah. yeah and and manifest great. your reality and uh, don't let anything interfere with it. Um, you know, I, I understand where a lot of people are coming from. 
Um, I don't accept it, but I understand it. And they're, I guess they're, a lot of them are like I used to be in that if you couldn't see it or feel it, then it didn't exist. Um, and that, that's aside from a, a faith aspect, but you know, people want to be able to see, they want to be able to see the results of the, the currency reset, uh, the RV and uh, the wealth transfer and everything else that's, that's um, coming. Mm -hmm. um, they want to see the proof. You know, show me, you know, tell me, give me a, a, someone I can talk to that can yeah. confirm mm -hmm. what you've just said. Um, well, you know, it doesn't necessarily work that way. You know, you've got to have the faith that it's going to happen and that mm -hmm. it, it is happening. And once you get over that hurdle, then things will start to happen for you. Yeah, I think it's a really, there's some, you know, poor choices of words that people use. Um, you know, they say try or they'll say if, if instead of if it's it's when, because it's going to happen, you know, or I'm going to try and do this. No, I am going to do this or this is going to happen. It's choice of words is so important when we're trying to affirm and command and manifest our new reality as well. So, yeah, I, I really love your perspective. Bob, I have a question for you, for anyone new or even someone who's already part of um, Source Directives. What would you recommend they do to get a closer connection with Source? Um, I think connection with Source is a very personal thing uh, and it's, it's different for everyone. Um, grounding is a good start, right? Get out in your backyard, get out in the on the grass um, in bare feet and, and ground yourself. You know, let all that negative energy flow down into the into Mother Earth. She will take it and replace it with sunlight. Um, well, sorry, I'm zinging away here. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, just... Stand there and, and close your eyes and await and uh, let it all flow through you and, and you'll find that the, you know, the, the sunlight will flow down through you into the earth um, and the positive energy will flow back up in, into your body. Um, you, know, you may not feel it, you may not see it, uh, certainly may not uh, or certainly unlikely the first couple of times you do it, but just keep doing it. You know, what's it going to hurt? Um, and, and when you hear those voices in your head, don't think you're crazy. You know, ask the questions and, and trust the answers that you're getting um, are from a higher being, that they are source talking to you. And um, the more you trust, the more you accept that, then the more you're going to get the connect or the, the stronger your connection is going to become. Uh, and it's it's not easy. Uh, we've we've seen people time and time again get thrown into asylums because they've heard voices or they've seen things that they uh, no one else can see. Well, hang on, maybe they're the ones that aren't crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we we uh, I wouldn't say often, but occasionally we see things, uh, particularly through our peripheral vision. That you, know, you, you, know, you, you see something happening on the side, you look around and it's gone. Well, it, it, that's where the fairies live. You know? And I'm not off with the fairies, but you know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where they are. Um, they're in a, a slightly higher dimension and, and you know, you'll see them through your peripheral vision. You know, kids, um, kids have imaginary friends. Well, who says they're actually imaginary? The adults. Now, guess what? Maybe those friends are actually there, and you know, I reckon they are. Yeah. Um, and you know, kids are, are so pure of heart. You know, they can see things that we will we've lost the ability to see, and uh, uh, you know, growing back into that ability to see, and it, it's going to be a beautiful experience. Yeah. It but, is. You know, trust trust your heart. You know, is the, the biggest thing, I think, um, for your connection to source. Just trust what you're hearing and what is happening with you in your heart and you'll go a long way. Yeah, feel into that. And 
I, I guess, you know, the other thing we could probably add to that even, Bob, which was such a beautiful explanation, and thank you so much for your personal understanding experience you shared, is I know Smarty suggests listening to the right because you can confirm that that is source. He's always to our right. And then the mm -hmm. other thing would be to feel into whether the message you're receiving, if you're not sure if it's just some voice, you know, if, is it loving? Is it loving? You know, because source yeah. is always loving and true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when you're starting out listening to source and confirming source, well, yeah, confirm that it is source talking to you, um, by all means. Um, occasionally, you may get something else talking to you but you know, as as you become more aware you will know the difference and, and your um, source will never tell you to do something wrong never um, and if, if it doesn't seem right then it's yeah probably not source telling you to do it that's right and what would you recommend someone do if they were in that situation clear, clear themselves, themselves. Clear yeah. themselves, right? Cloak and conceal, clear yourself. Um, excuse the French, but just tell them to fuck off. Yeah, you see know? you later. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you get the hell out of here. You know, yeah. I want I do not I do not contract with you. Um I you have no power over me. Get out of here. And, and that that usually breaks the connection. Yeah. I love that. And even visualize, even, you know, cutting like a cord or energetic cord above your head or wherever it may be coming from that you're feeling it, you know, and there's holograms as well, free holograms to help with, yeah. you know, all, all of those type of things. So source protection, yeah. the black diamond hollow that you, that you spoke of, and also um, like all the demon buster, the reptilian buster, the ET buster, all those are freely yeah. available. Yeah. yeah. You know, every night when we walk, we do a, a cloaking command before we go, cloak and conceal command, um, protection command. Um, around every doorway in our house, we have black diamond hollows posted. Um, we have the uh, entity busters. Um, we have the the, uh, the fire protection hollow. So, you know, yeah, they're on every door, every window. So, I love that. Just, you guys just yeah, and, um, we're strong enough to know when we're being attacked. Um, we have no fear of the attacks anymore. Um, we know that we can counter whatever's being thrown at us. Um, but you know, we, I put those there in the doorways um, well, probably two years ago, three years ago. Um, and you know, no need to remove them. They just stay there. You know, they're not doing any harm. Um, we probably don't need them there anymore, but you know, hey, I'm not going to take them down either. They're probably doing a good job, you know. That's right. Everything, everything helps. Everything that's helps. right. Just yeah. just overload your entire house, everywhere around you with free, the frequencies. I, I think yeah. it's great. It's so yeah. practical too and easy. You don't have to go walking through the house. I used to sage my house on the reg, like, go, you know, do a sage smudge and do like a full clearing of every corner in space. I don't do that now. I, I use my wand or I just do like a huge shield, energetic shield yes. around my entire home. Yep. And yeah, it's, it works a treat. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Bob. I think we're going to wrap things up now. I was so, Pleasure. I'm so grateful and I've been so honored to speak with you today. Thank you so much for You're your welcome. time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on and good luck. Oh, well, thank Thanks, you. Peter. <laughs> all right. I'll be linking all of Bob's, uh, his YouTube channel and also the Bob Love Bubble Up creations that he has down below, as well as Smarty's website which is smartiescorner.com and the Company of Heaven official. So you guys can go and have a look at the free hollows as well as any of the tools and products that we discussed today. All right, Bob, thank you. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Love and light. Love and light. Bye. <laughs>